thank you for coming today. This is great. I'm uh, excited to talk about this because this is a topic that's very near and dear to me and is really a very um, powerful way to consider how you grow your business. So with that, what's different? Or maybe I should ask the other question, what's not different today mm -hmm. pre-pandemic? Because people have had two and a half, three years to really rethink everything in their life, right? You know, we were now, we were working remotely, entirely remotely. Um, we don't, didn't commute for a long time. If you drove your car places, you said, hey, maybe I can do this without having to commute. And so people went through an, an assessment of what do I want and where do I want to go and am I doing what I want to do? And I think the great resignation was a surprise to me and in some respects that that many people would choose to walk away last year from what they were doing. But I think it was a really powerful example of people voting with their feet in a way that they never had voted before. And I think those are all things as business leaders that are really important for us to pay attention to today. So I'm not going to go through this. This is just kind of like an example of stuff that's changed. But in your own mind, I'm sure there's experiences and things that you've noticed in your own world, in your own business that have changed. And the thing, bottom line, I guess I'd like to share with you is that change is going to be here forever. We're not going back to where we were. We don't see buggy whips around, so we never went back to buggy whips. But the thing that's going to happen is change is going to increasingly come faster and faster, and it's going to be more and more information that you're going to have to process very quickly as a business leader. And it's going to be more important for you to pay attention to yourself as part of that process because it's pretty hard to lead people if you're not sure where you're going. Okay? So that's why I wanted to talk about mindset because I think that's really, really key. So we don't really hear about mindset um, <laughs> being discussed within the business community. But I will tell you, and I've got two names up here, Ray Dalio and Oprah Winfrey, they are ultra successful business people by almost any stretch of the definition. And they are both, in different ways, very mindful individuals. Dalio meditates once a day, and if you read his quote, on really difficult days, he meditates twice a day. Oprah Winfrey leads a mindful life in terms of how she operates and lives in the world as she's very conscious of where she is, how she's thinking, and so forth. So those are just two examples, and there's many, many others, and I would argue, in one sense, all successful business people, all successful people in life are mindful in their own way. Just maybe more or less obvious, but you have to really have that kind of a mindset to be a, a success anyway. So what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about why I'm a big fan of mindfulness. So I'm going to talk to you about my own experience, our own experience, in coming to terms with mindfulness. About 20 years ago, we started a software company out in uh, California. We had just moved out there. We'd been around the world doing different jobs. I was working in large corporations. Peter, who's in the room, my business partner, life partner, whatever, been married for decades. Um, he'd been consulting for a lot of years. And we had reached a point where, OK, we got to do something different. So we just moved to the Silicon Valley area. And we said, hey, let's start a business. How hard can it be? And it was really, really hard. So don't ever say that just because it's really, really hard. Um, we learned a lot, um, built this company through the Great Recession, uh, we didn't raise money, we bootstrapped the whole thing, which made it even harder. One <coughs> exit down from our house, Google was hiring, <coughs> the other exit north, Facebook was hiring. And this is when they were scaling early on. We had to somehow be different, because we had to attract the same kind of talent, but we couldn't pay them that, and we didn't have the beautiful office buildings and money. So, we had to really rethink how we did things. Fast forward to 2014, roughly 10 years we put into this business, started it in our backyard, and we found ourselves at a point where we decided, you know, we're exhausted. We're just wiped out here. And so we decided to hire an investment banker to shop the business. 
Nobody was interested. This is a very successful tech company. We transformed the food service and vending industry with the software. We couldn't find any buyers. We were also, the two of us, in a very negative place. We didn't like ourselves, we didn't like each other, we didn't like what we were doing. Everything was cloaked with a negative perspective. Very tough. The third point is um, we, were, we were in a place where we just wanted out, which is kind of related to that, that negativity. We were just exhausted. And we found ourselves later in that year in an even more difficult place when our business partner, who had a multi-year contract with us, decided he was going to get out. Of course, we challenged him. He's like, no, you're not going to do that. Well, he got out. So we found ourselves late 2014 with six months before we'd have to file for bankruptcy and lay off all the employees who had committed to us for nearly 10 years. That was a really, really bad place to be. Really bad. We went down to see family late that year for the holidays and spent some time, decided to stop in New Orleans on our way back. And when we were there, I remember turning to Peter and I said, whatever we're doing is not working. And we have to change. Now what the heck we changed to, I have no clue but we have to change. And I remember when I said that to him, I was scared to death because I felt like we'd tried pretty much everything and I just had no clue what to do. Now it also happens that earlier that year, Peter, for personal reasons, had been looking into this whole concept of the power of your thinking, you know, mindfulness and so forth. And it was intriguing, but you know, I kind of thought to myself, you know, that's kind of that movie stuff, doesn't really seem like it makes sense. But given the situation we found ourselves in, we had no options. And it's like, okay, this is something we can do. It's free, I don't have to pay anybody. It's all with me, I don't have to go anywhere. So let's do it, let's try it out, let's figure it out. So we started. And I will tell you an aspect of that um, experience, uh, especially early on, was because it was so scary to think about losing everything in six months, I didn't want to think about that. So this was all an alternative to thinking about that, oh my god, we're going to eventually have to lay off all these people, and, and we have nothing to show for 10 years of effort. So that was the incentive to also move in that direction. So we started reading things, we started talking to people, we started doing seminars, and we learned. And six months later, fast forward, it was a Friday, we signed paperwork to finalize the sale of our company for millions of dollars. They took all our employees, nobody got laid off, and we were out. Six months. <laughs> so that's how powerful this is. This is not woo-woo stuff. This is the way the world really works. Okay? So I share that with you. By the way, it is painful to revisit some of those, those memories there. Um, but this is the way it works. We were very disciplined. We were very focused. We had to figure it out. But what I'd like to do with you this afternoon, with the you know, time we have left, is introduce you to two tools that you can use if this is something that you really like to consider doing. It's easy to do, you just need to be consistent in applying it. Okay? You'll also learn a lot about yourself. So, um, the other thing I want to mention is, we did start a company called You Can Choose. Um, we were consulting and training for a number of years. Um, about this stuff. Um, I don't really have any handouts, but if you go to that site, you can see basically two years of, or excuse me, four years of blog posts that we blogged every week. And you can see from the beginning some of the journey that we went through, because we were blogging about stuff as we, <laughs> as we were doing it. It's like trying to figure it out. So you can, you can see some of that. Um, the other thing is we wrote a book, and the book is all online, and the book is, each chapter is a half a page, it's not long. 
Um, but I would ask if you do that, read the introduction first so that you know how to read and use a book. Because each chapter has a lot of stuff packed in it. And what is really beneficial is if you read the chapter and then you think about it for a day, a week, whatever works. But just reading through the whole book, you could probably do it in an, in an hour if you really read fast. But you'll miss out on all the benefits of it. It's really about thinking about the stuff that's in there. So that's out there. Instead of a handout, that's where you can go. It's free. If you want to buy a hard copy, you can pay Amazon 10 bucks. Um, so the first thing is to pay attention to what you think about. And this was an early experience I had. I remember one day I was um, sitting around and I was just watching people in a um, coffee shop, side of the street corner. And I, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna pay attention to what I'm thinking. So he said, you know, go ahead, be a fly on the wall in your head and just observe your thinking. And I remember hearing all this chatter in my head that's like, commenting about, why did she put those shoes with that pair of pants? <laughs> or why did he cut his hair like that? Or why, how, and then I remember thinking about myself, it's like, what are you talking about? Who the heck cares, Beth? This is like stupid. And, and I remember, it was like, wow. I didn't know I was a judgy person. I was like, wow. And <laughs> I remember, Thinking to myself, you didn't think of your life this, but you kind of are, girl. So I remember a couple other times I, you know, did the same thing. I just kind of had you know, a moment where I could just pay attention, just observing, non-judgmentally, by the way, just observing what I was thinking, and found the same kind of thing. It's like, okay, Beth, do you really want to think like this or not? Is this who you are? No, I don't want to think like this. Plus, it's like I don't need to use that energy. For it's like a lot of extra energy you're wasting. So that in was my first step to really pay attention to my thinking. And it's a great way for you to kind of get into your head and just observe what are you thinking when you're not really thinking about what you're thinking, okay? And the thing that I really, really want to emphasize is that you don't judge yourself whatever way with your thinking because you're going to learn about yourself. You're going to well, pay attention to things that you don't even know what's going on. I kind of equate this to being the white noise in the background that you don't even know it's there, but it's there and, and it's influencing you. So pay attention, be that fly on the wall in your head, and then when you make a choice about whether you want to think that way or not, if you don't, that's when you use what I call the wait a minute tool. This is what I, what I did to myself. <coughs> is I'd say, okay, Beth, you're thinking in a way that you don't want. So when you're just observing stuff, you can catch yourself and say, wait a minute, Beth, call yourself out. Do you want to think like this or not? And when you do that, it instantly stops that thought process and it gives you this nanosecond to choose, do you want to keep thinking like that or not? And the way that this is a really powerful tool for you, particularly in the business setting, is when you find yourself in that place, like Peter and I did, where, oh my God, what do I do? You can go down the rabbit hole really fast with all the negative thinking, like, shit, sorry, <laughs> what do I do? You know, if you stop yourself and say, hey, Beth, Wait a minute, that will get you off the edge of the cliff and get you to really focus and say, okay, where do I want to go on here? Give yourself the option to choose, okay? You can choose to go down the rabbit hole, that's okay, but if you give yourself that moment, you can choose not to if, in fact, that might be a better choice for you. So that's the first tool. And I've used it many, many times uh, if you go in and you do a search on the, on the blogs, you might be able to find actually a couple posts about it because people wrote about it a few times. So the, the point is, um, when you go leave here today, and this is, if this is something you want to do, think about when you might choose to use this. Maybe you take a shower in the morning before you go into work, or before you have some really uh, potentially difficult conversations, either with customers, employees, 
that's a perfect time to start to pay attention to what's going on in your head, because those are the times when you're more than likely getting close to one of those rabbit holes that you can go down real fast. Okay? And this next one is a question. And this is a question that we often ask people when we are working with them in a class format. What do you want? And in here, I'll ask specifically for you to think about what do you want for your business? Okay? The reason that's a really powerful question is because oftentimes we are thinking about, what well, gosh, I wish I had more money, or man, I really wish I could find a person with these skills, or I wish I could do this or that. But when you answer that question the first time around, it doesn't always allow you to really get to the real reason why you want whatever it is you want, okay? So one of the things I will tell people when I first ask them a question is when you think about that answer, think about it in generalities. Don't be too specific. Because if you think in general about what you want, and I'll say, I'll give you an example here to walk through, um, because I'd like you to team up here in a second, is if you get really specific about what it is you want, you start to eliminate possibilities <laughs> that it could come to you in a way that are way better than what you're asking for. So you don't want to lock off those kinds of opportunities. Okay? So and I, I'll make up an example. You want new customers, some really great new customers. Well, if you're defining that customer as I want, want them to make this much money, I want them to be in this industry, and I want them to be able to come to me like this. Well, you're cutting off all the opportunities of people who aren't in that industry who make a whole lot more money and who, who can create a whole lot of other business opportunities for yourself. So that's why you want to be general in what it is you're asking for, but you want to be open to possibilities that it can come to you in some way that you least expect. And that's where the really joyful things are that show up with this. The other thing, I guess, in this bottom point here, notice how it feels when you have it. That is really important. Because one of the things that we don't do in business is we don't pay attention to our feelings. And I don't know about you, but enough, you guys look like you're old enough to have been out in the world and experienced a few things. And I know there's a point in time in your life where you have had this feeling like, do not even go there. Do not do this because you'll regret it, okay? Well, that is you, your internal you, flashing a red line or a red light saying, you go this way, it's not gonna work out well. So being in tune to your feelings is a really powerful tool <clears throat> to know whether going in a certain direction or not with your business, or it just looks your personal life as well, is a good thing, or not, okay? So that's really important, and that's one of the things that I think, unfortunately, business does a disservice to itself, or us as business people is, you know, people say don't pay attention to your feelings, but yeah, it's pretty powerful, so. So what I'm gonna do now is walk you through an example of using, answering this question, what do you want? So I'm going to have you pair up, and I'm going to walk you through what I'd like you to do. Okay, this will just be a quick few minutes, but it's a great way for you to start to see how you can use this for yourself. So um, ask the question, what do you want? And I'm sure you guys have something that you thought about in terms of what you want for your business. So I'd like you to pair up, and with that person, Share with them what it is you want for your business, what would you like, and then share with them why you want that for your business. Okay, <clears throat> so the truck, I want a new truck, <clears throat> and the reason I want it is because I want to deliver product reliably. Okay, and then why do I want to deliver it reliably? Well, to make money. Why do you want to make money? Pay my employees. Okay. Not only pay my money, so why do I want to pay your money? Because I want to, I value creating well-paying jobs. So what this does 
is it gets you past that first pat answer, I want a new truck because I need a little product. But when you go down and ask yourself why each time, it gets you to the point where you're starting to get to a value that's important to you as a person. And that's a really important part of knowing who you are, especially as a business person. Because when you know who you are as a business person, you are so much more able to negotiate better deals because you have a better sense of who you are. You're much more able to attract talent that you want to work with you that would work well with you, okay? Those are the kinds of things that start to show up in your business when you have a much better sense of who you are as a person, okay? So, this bottom line is really what you want to get to. And so, if we can, I'd like to have you just, you know, with somebody next to you, it doesn't matter who. I'd like you to do this. We've got a few minutes. And I want you to practice doing this because this is really, really important. <laughs>
mm -hmm. real answer of what's yeah. down, and that was big. Yeah. Hard and interesting. Yeah. Well, you bring up a really good point, because what I'm assuming you're referring to is hard. It's like it was kind of hard to talk about or share. Just It's kind of like it came from this place. It's not like the Facebook thing you post. And the thing that's really powerful about that is that's you. And we don't always spend time getting to know who we are. You don't need to share that with anybody. That's, but, but the fact that you know more about you is a really powerful mechanism, because, or I should say tool, because one of the things that became very apparent to us as we started to learn how to do this a little bit better is we became better as people, individuals, Peter and I, and our relationship got better. So remember I was talking about that super negativity? We didn't want to be around each other or ourselves. Well, we didn't have to work on our relationship, but by working on ourselves, we ended up being in a better place together. So, so really, it's almost like it emanates outward from you when you really do the work. And when I say the work, it's not hard work, but it's, it's you know, really looking underneath that rug to see all the things that you've shoved in there over the years that you kind of just said, okay, I'll deal with this later. But it, it, unfortunately, if you keep doing that long enough, it all of a sudden comes out, and sometimes it comes out when you really don't want it to. So, anyway. So, yeah. Well, I guess once again, I found that uh, it was nice to tell somebody my dream without having to pay a therapist. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but uh, somebody told me this once. She said, if you're in a dark alley and somebody comes up to rob you, you should yell out, what do you want? And a lot of times it stops at the track because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Make your money or your life. It's a hard question. And, uh, it is. Like I say, it's, it's nice to be able, as a class project, because yeah. I came up on the street, this one would have run away from me. <laughs> 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 that's great. That's great. The other thing that's so great is she benefited by you sharing as well. I'm, I make the assumption she's not on your head, so at least I was in the right place. So yeah, and that's the thing that's so powerful about this is when you guys walk out of here, you're going to take all these experiences with you, and you're going to be able to use them now in other places in your life where it all of a sudden like, oh, I should try this here. I should think about this here. Or wow, what do I really want in this situation? What do I really want, what do I really want to have happen? Who are the people I want to work with? Who are the people I want to have as my customers? You can ask all those questions. There's no, no limitation here, and that's what's so amazing. The only thing that limits it is yourself. So just be cognizant of that. So one last thing I'll say before we leave is um, we are so not trained, taught, reinforced to have a relationship with ourself. When I say ourself, what we really think and who we truly are. There's an outward Facebook face, but who are we inside? And I would encourage you to get to know that person because your head is going to almost mostly be right, but this will always be right. It will always be right, especially in those moments, those dark moments that you don't know where the heck to go. Having a relationship with yourself is a really powerful tool to have. So. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank